Hi, this is Lee J. Welcome to Chatting with Lee. It's a chance for you to eavesdrop on a conversation I've had this week. So uh, I wonder who I've been chatting with this week. Let's find out. I am very privileged to have on the end of the line one of the three degrees. I have Helen Scott, who is a current member and also was one of the original members. Helen, it, it, well, it, I know you've sort of been in the band and then you left the band, but I mean, the Three Degrees are an iconic group. What does it feel like to, to, to be a member of a band like that? Well, let me say thank you very much for your, your comments and accolades at the whole bit. Um, you know what? It's, it's just amazing um, because starting out as a teenager, I don't think any of us ever thought that it would be what it is today. I think we all just wanted to be singers, and, and um, I don't think we really knew what all of this was going to be. So it, it's, it has been an exciting experience. Now, you, you started out, I'm, I'm going to say a few years ago, <laughs> <laughs> with, with, I think, Richard Barrett, was it, who, who got the band yes. together originally in Philadelphia? What was it like, I mean, going to rehearsals and sort of getting record deals? Because, I mean, you must have been quite young. We, well, I was 15, and um, it, was, it was interesting. It was exciting. It was um, sometimes a bit overwhelming. It was all of the thing, all the above, anything that you can imagine for a 15-year-old. We, again, just thought it was fun. At that time, it, it just we were learning. It was different than anything that we had done thus far in our lives, and nobody that we knew exactly had were having the same experiences that we were having. Um, we rehearsed every single day. Sundays was you know, we were not exempt from that. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> Every day after school, um, we were not allowed to go on um, uh, jobs, at, if you will, um, on, uh, only on the weekends because we were all in school. So, you know, our parents didn't, you know, like us to, to, to go out during the week. So we rehearsed during the week, and if we had shows to do on the weekends, then we did those. If we had to travel anywhere on the weekends, that's what we did until all of us came out of school. So it it was just a fun experience and and I look back some t- sometimes and and um uh, before Fayette passed away we used to share uh the 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 times we had together as young teenagers traveling and and the silly little things we used to do and <laughs> we were just giddy little teenagers that were fortunate enough to be put in a position that grew to what it is today. You were originally signed, I think, to Swan Records, which were based in yeah. Philadelphia? Yes. Swan Records was started, I don't know if you remember the series or the show American Bandstand. Oh, yes. Uh, with Dick Clark. Okay, well, one of the producers of that show is one of the uh, uh, for- formers of Swan Records. And um, so it it was a small company during that time, and there were you know they had a couple of acts on 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 the label, and um, so Richard Barrett took uh, started the group there at at Swan, and we had we had a couple of of songs that uh, were recorded uh, on that label, none that did as well as the Philly International things, but. It certainly was a platform at that time, and it, you know, like it was co- sort of like the groundbreaking for the group. And that what happened, la- in, you know, in the latter part of the years, is kind of what catapulted everybody to who we are today. I believe that a lot of the musicians that you recorded with, that, that were the live band at Swan, went on to become members of MFSB. And in you are absolutely correct. And, I mean, they were all young guys, too. You know, they, we were young, they were young, 
recording was totally different than we used to have to record at, in the same room with the musicians. If anybody made a mistake, no matter who it was, whether it was the singers or the musicians, you had to start all over again. So we kind of all grew up together. So, you know, MSFB, I mean, we just knew them as our friends that were, you know, part of our, our growing up, part of our rearing. I mean, it must have been incredible, you know, to be to be in that sort of environment where there was, you know, the the full orchestra. Because I mean, it, when you say the band, it's not just guitars and drums. I mean, it, you've got no, a full orchestra no, not there. At all. <laughs> Correct. But but we we were young and we had no idea. I mean, when I think back on some of the experiences with the recording and and just you know the, that whole time. We hadn't a clue, really. We just didn't have a clue. We were young teenagers. They were young guys, musicians. I don't think any of us, I'm sure we all wanted to have some kind of recognition in the industry, but never thinking that you would become a household word, MSFB. I mean, everybody knows who they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but everybody knows who the three degrees are. (laughs) (laughs) I've, I've... Got to say, I mean, the one thing, I, mean, I I love all those Philadelphia tracks, all those things that were recorded then. Um, everything from Dirty Old Man to, you know, uh, When Will I See You right. Again. Fantastic. Correct. And I know those are things that you do in the act that you perform now. Do, do you still get the same buzz that you get from those tracks? Um, I have to say yes. I think that was an... Uh, a very special time um, during that time. I mean, well, I mean, we all know the Motown story, but very few people really recognize the Philadelphia International story. And there, there is a story there. And I think Kenny and Leon were, or oh, who Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff, mm-hmm. they were sort of like the um, quiet people. They were never really pushed forward with their brand. They just wanted to create music, and I think they did one heck of a job. The 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 roster of people that they had, the kind of music, the genre of music, you didn't just hear one kind of music with Philadelphia International. And this is no slag against Motown. Motown was were the, were the pioneers of that kind of music at that particular time. But you can you can recognize more that Motown sound because well it, basically it all you know you, you 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 could just tell what it was yeah. with Philly I think um there were certain signatures with the Philly international sound however you didn't realize that Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff not only produced the 3 degrees and the OJs and how Melvin and the Blue Notes they produced the Jacksons and Lou Rawls and Patti LaBelle. Mm. There, there were so many different kinds of sounds there, not only R&B, but pop. And, and there were some, uh, you know, uh, country sounds that came out of there. So Philly International never, in my opinion, and I'm not being partial because we were a part of it or because we started in Philly, and we knew Kenny and Leon before, well before they became the Kenny Gamble and Leon <laughs> Huff of International. You understand? So, yeah. um, And it, it was just wonderful to see how that bloomed and how how that you know that whole sound of of the strings and 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 just the instruments it and as you put it earlier it was an orchestra it yeah. was just a beautiful orchestra the one thing i've got to ask you about because i mean obviously the 3 degrees was so big in the uk is charlie's angels <laughs> <laughs> I that's love that. A, you know that still tickles me. I, I, after all these years, I, I kind of blush when I when I when I think <laughs> about it. I, I, and I'm so grateful for for that time. I mean that I have to say that's one of the highlights of my career personally. And I know the career of the Three Degrees. And it's nice, even though we know uh, uh, His Royal Highness never actually really called us Charlie An- Charlie's Angels. I think the press nicknamed us that. But it's it's nice to be identified. It's nice to be 
um, to to have that kind of history. Um, you know, you can say I've been to Buckingham Palace, and I've been at a time where you couldn't just walk in and visit. Mm-hmm. You know, there were you know now you can tour it, but before then you had to be invited in, and not only were we invited once, we were invited twice, and mm-hmm. and and had the the opportunity to be in the company of uh, a monarchy. We don't have that in our country, you know. So it was it was very special, and and there were a few times I had to pinch myself and was like, really, is this me there? Okay, so. And people say, you know, all the time, oh, well, do you still have that kind of contact? No. We get messages every now and then if, if you know, a, a, a hello, um, if somebody is coming to one of our performances or mm-hmm. we're doing a charity that happens to be one of His Royal Highness's patron charities, you know, we'll, and he's not allowed, you know, he, he can't be there, then sometimes we'll get a hello or whatever. It's not what it was then, and, and we've moved on from that and just are thankful and grateful that we were allowed to have those memories. The one thing I, I've got to ask you, a little, little bit of a secret thing, if you don't mind. Is it true that Diana, Princess Diana, actually confided in you when you were pregnant that she thought she was pregnant too? Well, I don't know if you can call that confiding <laughs> in me um, because we were in a public place and oh, I was pregnant at the time. And she, of course, noticed that I was and, and just suggested that she, not a direct quote, but to, to suggested that there may be a possibility <laughs> that the same thing was going on with her. So um, that those were big smiles, and, and that was very nice. And it, it was very, I never took it as anything other than just a little conversation. I didn't think that I was privy to anything or, or but it, it, it was, you know, it was nice to have that conversation with her. Fantastic. You moved on to work with Giorgio Moroda, who I think is, a, yes. is an incredible guy. And Absolutely. You, you came out with one of my favorite tracks, which is Giving Up and Giving In. Such a track right. that is. Oh, my God. What was it like <laughs> working with Giorgio? Well, it was really easy. That's I, I guess that's the best word that I can use. It was very easy. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he expected of us. He projected that, and the producers or associate producers that he had working with him, everybody knew what they wanted, and yet they gave us the opportunity to be expressive as if, as the three degrees, to maintain our sound. Um, you know, uh, sometimes we would say, okay, well, what do you want us to do? Well, we just want you to be you. Just just sing. And if, if it's something that we don't like, we'll say it or whatever. So it was, it was very easy. He, he wasn't demonstrative in any way, very helpful, very, you know, some days he was in the studio, some days he wasn't. But he, we always knew exactly what our position was and his. It was, it was very clear and very easy. Now, of course, so all through this, Sheila had been Sheila Ferguson had had been, I guess, the lead singer, but she had left, and you brought um, Cynthia in, um, correct? Who now has been touring all over the world with you and recording, and you still maintain the three degree sound. Is that something which you work for a lot? Well, I think it's 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 safe and fair to say that this 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 thing, whatever you want to call it, a sound or a look or maybe a combination of of both or many things, was established years ago. And, you know, people kind of always have to pigeonhole you, if you understand what I mean, and they have to put you in a particular category, and you have to have a, quote, lead singer. With the 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 inception of the group and and as long as I can remember, it was never about one person, which is thusly the three degrees. You can't go on, even though Sheila Ferguson was labeled the you know the lead singer, she could never go on by herself mm. and be the three degrees. I could never go on myself, et cetera, et cetera. So the three degrees 
were always three people, and the three people were the sound, and the sound and also all of the other little specialities that we had with the dancing and the costumes and, the, you know, we didn't really use props so much as during those days. If we did, they weren't behind us. They were canes and hats and, and, and dance moves that we did. Those were our props. So we did what we called flat foot show business and were taught that if you could entertain an audience, you could work for the rest of your life. You didn't necessarily have to depend on a hit record. And that has, that, that has gone the test of time. We're still around. We haven't had, would like to, but haven't had a, a record on, you know, on charts as, as such um, in years, but we still perform. We still have people to come to see us. Maybe not in the thousands anymore all the time, um, but yet there's, a, there, there's, there's enough there to keep you going and to keep you doing what you love doing and what you've been taught to do. So the three degrees are, they're, they're, uh, um, they're a whole conglomerate of things, and it has always been that way and will always continue to be that way. Now, you, you say that the, the, the three degrees, as they are now, are still touring, you're still working, yes. You're still performing. Yes. I mean, yes. I've got to ask that question. Do you still get the same kick when you walk out on that stage? Absolutely. <laughs> and there is no, there's nothing else that I know that gives us or me the same feeling. Um, you know, I had someone to ask me in an interview, what is, you know, what is one of the most fond memories, uh, you know, in your life and in you know, the birth of my children, I have three children, mm. and, and, and each, each child is different than the other, so it just makes that very exciting. Well, the same thing applies to the three degrees. Every time you walk on that stage, you get the same kind of feeling. It may not be the same people in the same venues, and, but you still get that feeling like, wow, you know, I can't believe I'm doing this for a living, one and two, it's like you know uh, when when you get that reception from people, it kind of just says, okay, you, you know, Helen, Valerie, and Freddie. Now um, you're doing a good job. You're entertaining people. You're you're and you're having fun doing it. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Don't you dare, because we. I know <laughs> when I said to people. I'm going to be interviewing one of the three degrees. Everybody said, the three degrees. Oh, wow. <laughs> you are still loved. You are still cherished. You are still really, really, you know. I, I'll tell you what it is. There are two all-girl bands that have done brilliantly well, better than any other. One is the Supremes. The other one is the three degrees. Those Thank are the you. two. And to Thank be able you. to Thank talk you. to you is fantastic. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. And thank you for, for taking this time to, uh, you know, just kind of recirculate the three degrees because every time you do something like this, it is a recirculation. It really is because you'd be surprised a lot of people had, didn't think we were around or, you know, thought we were a tribute band. I say that <laughs> nightly on stage that, you know, we are not, nor have we ever been, nor do we intend to be a tribute band. We're not. And, and yet there are, you know, tons of people going around saying, oh, well, I was one of the three, yeah. I'm one of the three we <laughs> used to be. No, you're not. No. <laughs> hey, listen. No, we you're not. If I wanted you to suggest one song from the Three Degrees huge catalogue to finish this interview on, what would it be? That's a tough well, one. I think anyone who knows anything about the Three Degrees could answer this question <laughs> blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> Deaf <laughs> in one ear, you would know. When will I see you again? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank you so much, Helen. It's been an absolute it, pleasure chatting with you. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. You can find links to more of my interviews on my Facebook page and on YouTube channel, Chatting with Lee.